one of the first food ships into Naples after the port was captured brought a cargo of white flour, the first seen in Italy for three years. The Nazis, looting and commandeering all they could lay hands on, swept Naples bare of food. The Allies came to the rescue. Dockside onlookers who didn't mind a bit of dirt with it had their own little hobbies. Bread distributing centers were besieged. The one thing eager Italians can't do is form an orderly queue. But we have to remember that these unfortunate people were all hungry. They're just a few of the millions made desperate by the Nazi scourge. It proves the plight of these people that they waited hours for a ration of only half a loaf for two days. That's all that the first cargo would run to. Amgard has much improved the position since these delayed pictures were taken. Allied occupation means the quick ending of such painful scenes as these. The Marquis of Lilithgo returned from India after serving as Viceroy for the exceptional period of seven and a half years. Lady Doreen Hope and Lady Joan Hope, his two daughters, together with their mother, accompanied Lord Linlithgow on the air voyage home. Mr. Amory was on the platform. Granddaughter Lady Sarah Hope, age three, also made the air voyage. After India, there's nothing in holding the baby. Travelling by air, Admiral Lord Louis Mountbatten arrived at Delhi. Air Marshal Pierce and General Auchinleck met him. Admiral Mountbatten has taken up the command in Southeast Asia with the reconquest of Burma as objective number one. China welcomes the appointment. Affairs in this theatre of war should take a turn for the better under the dashing direction of Lord Louis Mountbatten. Another traveller was Mr. Eden, here shown with General Maitland Wilson on arriving at Cairo en route to Moscow. Films from Cairo are slow travellers and great events have taken place since these pictures were taken. Messrs. Eden, Molotov and Hull have consolidated the diplomatic front at Moscow, a big step forward to Nazi defeat. The Egyptian Premier, Nahas Pasha, appeared to be quite pleased with information received. Leaving a grim trail of fire and desolation, the Nazis have fled to the Dnieper and beyond. The Russian non-stop offensive inflicts on Germany the greatest military defeat ever known. Cutting off the Crimea, the Red Army took 6,000 prisoners in two days, and that was before the Nazis surrendered the peninsula itself. The armor of entire panzer divisions was destroyed or captured. These pictures, just arrived in Britain, select incidents typical of thousands. stores of German material, some of it made in France, seem like grim tombstones on the grave of the Wehrmacht. To the accompaniment of Russian triumphs in the field, the Moscow Conference laid plans to shorten the war and build an enduring peace. Safely, the convoy came to India. How greatly the United Nations depend on sea transport and naval power, even in this age of the air, is brought home to us in this graphic photo report by Morris Ford, ace of newsreel war correspondent. Famous liners and scores of merchantmen made up the greatest convoy ever to leave Britain. Not a man was lost of all the thousands carried, not a ship was sunk. The convoy arrived just before Sir Stafford Cripps left India. It put into effect the promise he made when he landed that Britain would reinforce the country with all possible speed. Never had speed been more urgently required. Representative of all departments of the British Army, the troops went to India while Japan was at the height of her sweeping conquest and had but recently driven us from Burma. The first ships to drop anchor brought reinforcements which might well have had to defend India from Japanese invasion. At that critical hour, Congress leaders talked with sublime oriental disregard of the ugly fact. Happily, the British government could reinforce India against the enemy while still negotiating with Indian statesmen. Troops and sailors from Norway sailed with the convoy. 
The joy on arriving was voiced by a liner captain. Well, on behalf of the ship's company, I'd like to say that we are very glad to have brought along safely a lot of the boys to their destination. And from what I can see of them, they're all full of beans and high spirits. And I'm sure that when they meet the enemy, they will prove that the old saying is as true as ever, that what is British is good. As no single port in India could accommodate that great congregation of ships, the vessels were detailed to more than one destination. These are not days when ships can be kept idle, waiting to unload one hour longer than necessary, so no time was lost at the port. Great must have been the relief of the soldiers that the overlong training period at home was ended. They were landing now in a country where they might soon expect fighting. In the First World War, the song of the sorely tried infantry was Take Me Back to Blighty. Your soldiers today long to go abroad. They made a reassuring sight formed up on the key side. We have declared our willingness to place India on equality with the Dominions when the war is over, but till the danger is past, no radical change can be allowed to jeopardize her defense. Between the common people of both countries, there is no quarrel. In India, the British Tommy has always known how to make himself at home. British and American tanks form part of the big mass of war material brought over in the convoy. It speaks well for British promptitude and sense of urgency that all this could have been transported nearly 12,000 miles at short notice to meet the menace created by the loss of Burma. Fofa's guns were among the anti-aircraft pieces brought over. Better still, for hitting back, thousands of bombs were in the cargo. In addition, we have the men, some of the finest regiments in the world, trained to a hair. Politics are inevitably pushed into the background in time of war. As defenders of India for more than 200 years, we shall not abdicate in the face of the enemy at the behest of visionaries. Nor would Indians themselves, outside Congress, wish us to do so. The fighting Indians and the common people know that upon Britain they can rely for guidance, justice and generosity. <laughs> <laughs> 